and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 151. Like the wild, is it wild turkey? 151? What, what's uh, the? Uh, Bacardi, right? Oh, shit. Whatever the 151 okay, yeah, just... shit is that you light on fire when I, sp- when I put it on the bar. I don't know. For Thursday, the 30th of November, 2017, this is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. It's Amos and Kent and Mike TV on an actual show. Yeah, hey, woo. How you guys doing? <laughs> Good. So, and, oh, so Mike, you're actually a returning guest, but this is the first time you've seen the full slate of uh, of, of Amos and Kent. Like this is this is the first time that you've yes, been on. With, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry to disappoint. Yeah, because uh, Kent's a slacker and had to bail last time. Like, no, no, I I, I thought I thought it was Kent. Kent was uh, was actually uh, he thought I was of of alien descent and he's like he's like i don't deal with i don't deal with people that, that are off wilders i'm ra- i'm not racist from a human perspective but people that are from a different planet yeah. fuck those guys and i'm like but i'm, I'm like ken i'm not from a, i'm from earth man it, he's like look you man he he's he's ken's what you call a non-earther all right he doesn't yes, believe yeah. that mike tv's oh, yeah. from earth so yeah. we had to go through a rigorous process to get uh records validated and shit and man it, i mean it just, yeah, it just gets a, uh kind of an alienist. <laughs> yeah. like self-admitted i'm an alienist yeah, see, he, I, uh, he was a racist you know, you're, you're not of this planet like i man, yeah, i don't know he was a racist but then he finally came to the realization that all of humanity is the same race and he's like shit i gotta hate somebody now you know he had to yeah, he had to yeah. go off planet for it so uh um, yeah <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, it's good to finally have you on an official episode of RMP, Mike. Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. Thank you. I'm we, excited to be here. We were supposed to have you on with Christy Cates about a month ago, and you decided to be in line for fucking TwitchCon instead. And yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really am. I do have to apologize, <laughs> apologize about that. I had, I had no idea. I had, I, I, I had such grand aspirations for what aspirations for what I was going to be able to do over that weekend. And it turns out that like anything other than TwitchCon related stuff at TwitchCon, I could I could do no, none of it. So like like you know like I, I once but when I first stepped foot on a TwitchCon, that's all it was. Like, like I had plans to meet what meet up with friends. I'm in Los Angeles. Like nothing. I just it was yeah. just TwitchCon from beginning <laughs> to end. So I really do apologize, guys. Well, when we booked you, you said you were going to be on the road, but you'd have your laptop and you'd be able to you know everything would be good. And I was like, okay, cool. And then the day that you you tell me. Like day of you say, oh, uh, I'm still I'm at in line at TwitchCon. I was like, oh, that's okay. So it's yeah, gonna yeah. be a Christy Cates episode. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, yeah. It was it was it was funny because the thing was just like uh, you know like I figured I figured that we would show up like we got there early and and you know and we, we and we were gonna get in the line early but then we just kept running across people you know and it was just it became this like big love fest you know and then all of a sudden I'm like oh shit you know like I've got a podcast I I. I'm going to be across town to get all my stuff set up for this podcast. And so I just reached out to you guys. Like, and so we climbed, we stepped in the line. They sent us because we were speaking there. I, 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 someone would, someone said, Oh, you're speaking. You, you, you go through a separate line. Hmm. So I'm like, Oh, that's great. So we went to this like VIP is, line. Is this like an Wait, hour was, after you were already in the other line? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. So the thing is, yeah. So, so first, no. So first they sent us to the VIP line and so we're staying in this VIP line and we're there for like 25 minutes, and then we realize, oh shit, there's no one actually working. There's no one actually at the front of the desk. So there's just a bunch of people standing in line. For, I don't know why. Like, well, I don't know what was happening. So we go to someone else. And we're like, I go to the front. And I'm like, hey, we're standing in this line. And we were told to stand in this line. So it turns out, it turns out that there was no. They didn't give a fuck that we were speakers, and you know, like they were like, <laughs> we got, we did get free badges, which was awesome. But like, but they just sent us in 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 the normal line, which was already like ridiculously long, and then uh, like or the normal affiliate line, and then. And then and then Boone kept j- trying to jump the line to get to like a be- a quicker line, and every time he jumped it, anyway, anyway, every time he jumped it, uh, it would turn out that that was not the line he was supposed to be in, and we'd have to start back. And I'm like, right, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's stated. It's like being in traffic, and then you you see that the left lane is going faster than your lane, and you switch lanes, and then all of a sudden the right lane is now going. No faster. matter what, yes, the old man yes, is going to beat yeah, you, yeah. man. The old man in the walker is going to beat you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here in Alaska, there's usually only, only two lanes, and one's the slow lane, and the other one's the like might as well be going in reverse lane. So you just <laughs> you just kind of stay where you're at. Wow! Um, not that anybody lets you in anyway, because <laughs> really in a, in Alaska there there is traffic issues. Well, so Anchorage in southern well, Anchorage is there are two roads into Anchorage, thus there are so two roads out. There's 2,000 people that live in Alaska, and 1,990 of them live in Anchorage on the road that Amos takes to work. That's 
And they, and they all take it at the same time, and they all do it specifically just to piss him off. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's about it. Um, yeah, the, there's, a, there's a road that goes south out of Anchorage and a road that goes north. The one that goes north is two lanes on each direction. Uh, three lanes to start with, and then it cuts down to two because that uh, real fucking smart. And yeah, then yeah. the other road is just two lanes, like one one lane each direction. And that road, I could not live south of Anchorage. Like, that's that's madness. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I work on base, and the base is just outside of Anchorage, so I got to basically fight everybody that's driving to Anchorage to go to work to get to where I'm going. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. If, there, if there's if there's an accident, the state law is that, that you have to close off the lane that the accident happened. So if it's a multi-lane accident, accident, they have to close off all the lanes. And if you're only starting with two lanes to begin with, yeah. Or if they hit a moose, which is really common up here, they have to close off all traffic <laughs> until they decide exactly how the moose was hit. And then they have to clean off the moose, and then they have to allow traffic for one lane until the accident is cleared, and then they can open the. Like, why? Why are you not just using a jetpack? That's ridiculous, <laughs> man. Like, like, you know, like that's like. Um, no? it, it it has crossed. See, when I was in Hawaii, we we lived there's this area called Eva Beach, and it's directly across Pearl Harbor from Hickam, and people would literally just drive to Eva Beach and get a kayak that they would have. They had kayak racks. They'd go yeah, unlock their awesome. kayak and just kayak across the channel to work every day. Like that was that they did, you know, and they'd get in a car and drive. They ha they'd have a used beat up car just to drive on base. Um, I'm thinking it it's, it's about 30 miles, but I'm thinking just a snowmobile on the, on the frozen, the lake would, would get me there. Yeah. 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 Or, 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 or like a ski lift kind of thing, you know, you like, yeah. you can install something like that, you know, like, the, like oh, yeah. between the base and kind of your you neighborhood, a, a monorail here. If they, if they installed a monorail going from Anchorage, just to like downtown Wasilla or Palmer, like in one of these small towns up here, all the traffic issues would be gone. Cause nobody likes driving that shit. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, yeah. That's, but, that was one of the great things about Europe man. the, the train is the way to travel. Right. That is awesome. Right. Yeah, the, the, the vehicle same, is same the with exception. DC. Mike, I don't know if you've ever been to DC, but if you try to drive in that fucking town, like, yeah, just, no, that's no, it's like, it's like Boston. I, I, we only played one show in DC at a place called the black hat. And, and it was, and it was the most terrifying and frustrating and, 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 and infuriating thing. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. B Boston and Boston and DC were the worst, were the worst places to drive. Like we we showed up at like, like literally at rush hour traffic and it was the most brutal. Like, like it, yeah, I will never, ever again, ever try to try to yeah. play DC. Yeah. Uh, for the yeah, record, you, Hawaii is no better. If you ever need to go anywhere in DC, you drive to one of the, the outskirt towns and catch the train in. Even if you live you in DC, drive. you drive out of DC to catch a train to come back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. That, that's crazy. Um, yeah. in, in Hawaii, it took us uh, 48 minutes on average to drive 16 miles. And yeah. that was both directions God, every that's single worse day. Than Okinawa. And that's with Holy six crap. that's with six lanes of traffic plus two uh zipper lanes where, where they like move the little things over and they take away two lanes going the opposite direction. Yeah, that's that's how that was in Hawaii. It was it was well, traffic was the only thing about Hawaii I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, it, it, I mean I, I get that. It, it is it, cause it's beautiful. I mean, you're like yeah. like, hey, I'm stuck in traffic, but it's still beautiful. You know, like this is you know, but yeah, I, I This know, is the best yeah. weather to be stuck in traffic in. I, I, it's, it's funny. I, I, the very first time I arrived in Hawaii, I climbed off, the, like, like we, we deplaned on the tarmac hmm. and I stepped out and I'm like, the whole fucking place smells like flowers. I'm like, is this like, they, are they pumping this in? Like the whole place smells like, I'm like, this is, there's no way that the whole state smells. And, and it, of course my, my nose eventually acclimated, but it took, it took, you know, a good, a good 12, 14 hours. And so hmm. every time we were inside and I go outside, I'm like, it still smells like flowers. This is ridiculous. The first time I went to yeah. Hawaii, I had just left Okinawa. I've been in Okinawa for a month, went to Hawaii to medevac for my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, we get there, and I didn't have time to think about Hawaii because it was like, okay, we're rushing to the hospital. We're take, we're, we were in the hospital for uh, four or five days before we ever stepped foot outside. And then once we stepped foot outside, it's like we don't want to go back inside if, ever. Um, yeah. But yeah. Then, then leaving Okinawa, I got stationed there like for four years. Awesome. So I lived there awesome. for four years. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that tomorrow's forecast is seventy, uh, low of 73, high of 86, 30% chance of showers with partly to mostly cloudy skies and um, a westerly wind, 10 to 15 and miles yeah. an hour. You know why? Because that's yeah. the forecast every single day, every <laughs> year. <laughs> Easiest <Yeah>. job ever. <laughs> the weather the people are like, ah, yep, yeah. still Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, yeah, yeah. He just yeah, literally like, thugs like, it in. Like check yeah. in with check in with the meteorologist is like just check in with me every day to make sure we're still in Hawaii. Like yeah. that's yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's the, all I do. We, the fact that still Hawaii. The fact that they, they have a meteorologist, the office is overmanned. That's how, that's yeah. how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, hey, uh, have you ever? Have either of you ever lived in an area where you have earthquakes? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Obviously, well, I, I South, Southern, Southern California. California. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, Kent. Yeah, I, I mean, wasn't it, sure not about on a regular basis. I mean, when I lived in in Vegas, we got them once in a while, mm. and of course, you know, pretty much anywhere else in the U.S. gets a tremor here and there, but right. uh, like a like a fault area, fault zone, whatever. No. Well, well so I grew up in, in Palmdale, California, for the most most of my my uh, childhood. So we lived on the fault. Like the fault was just. I I grew up in the era what, of what of doing earthquake school? drills and everything else. Do what? Right. What years were you there? Um, oh, e, well, first grade, so looking at 83 until until off and on in the 90s, until finally I moved out in 94. So like, the, oh, so, the, so you were there for the Northridge quake? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was, I was yeah, in a hot, yeah. well, was, uh, so there's two quakes right after another. The Northridge the Ukaipa, quake. The Ukaipa quake and the, and the Northridge were the, two, were the two big ones, yeah, right? Yeah, and the, the Northridge was the one where the, 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 the bridge collapsed and all that other stuff, right? Well, yeah, I was I was there yeah. for the uh, for when Candlestick broke. I actually watched that live on TV because I was watching the, the World Series and all of a sudden it started shaking and the and the the thing went dead. Right before that, my dog had piped up like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then that yeah, happens on the TV like and do. I was like, "What is that's crazy?" And all of a sudden, my house is we know we're four hundred miles away or whatever. Yeah, um, and yeah. then in Northridge, I was in the second floor on a waterbed in my entertainment center, like dong 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 dong. And, and then for all, like, both of the afterquakes, I was in the hot tub downstairs because I lived in an apartment complex. So I was in the hot tub, so all the buildings around me were shaking, and I didn't feel shit because I was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one, the Northridge quake, my buddy, my buddy had just flown in from Texas. He, 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 I, I met him in Palm Desert where I grew up, mm-hmm. which is, which is uh, two hours uh, east of Los Angeles, it, 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 like ne- right next to Palm Springs in the Coachella Valley. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, and my buddy, he, my buddy had spent uh, two or three years with us in Palm Desert. We had no earthquakes. Or, I mean, we had little minor tremors, but nothing to write home about during that period while he was with us. So he returns to Texas for I don't know how long. And then he, and he comes back to, uh, to California for his senior year. And I've already, I think I've already graduated high school. Mm. And, or he might have graduated. He might have graduated. But, but, but regardless, so it's like literally like he's back for like a week. And we're, we're hanging out and we're at my buddy Charlie's place. And, 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 and the North, the, or not the North quake, the Ukaipa quake, the one that, that like, it wasn't the one, it was the other big one in Southern California. Around that the, same the, time frame. What's yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was like, it was like, it was like, it was like maybe six months before the, mm-hmm. the Northwoods quake. And so it starts shaking and, and he like, you know, he looks kind of surprised. I'm like, I'm like, don't even sweat it, man. Like, don't even worry about it. And it starts shaking more and it gets more pronounced and it keeps going. It's like rolling and rolling. And so I'm like, I'm like, let's just go get in, in the doorway because at this point in time, that's what they told you, you know, like get in a doorway, you know, so we get in the doorway. And so, and he, and so my buddy had a, my buddy, Charlie, he, like his bedroom and the bathroom were right here. So there were two doorways right next to each other. So I'm like, I'm like, you get in that one. I'll stay in this one. So we're right here. And, and he reached, and so it keeps shaking and it keeps shaking and he reaches out and he grabs my hand. He's like, I love you, man. Like, like, he's literally, he's literally we're about to like, die, he's bro. like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I just need to let you know. And I'm like, I'm like, it's going to be fine, man. It's going to be fine. So, he, so, so and, and, it, and it was a pretty long protracted, twi- pr- protracted quake. And he was, and he was really freaked out, but he didn't, it didn't, it didn't boil over until the next day that we had a pretty significant tremor. Uh, like aftershock and, and the cars are rocking mm. and the birds all fly up and my buddy Jason just starts freaking out and starts screaming at the birds and he's like fuck you birds you can fly away and you're gonna <laughs> land on my bones you stay off my bones and he's like literally just losing his shit about these birds coming and like eating his corpse and I'm like Jason Jason it's gonna be fine but yeah it was but it was it was ridiculous and so oh geez yeah. um so Squid yeah. in the chat room, Squid 07 was actually living in the same. That's where I met him. Was living in the same apartment complex in Southern California. Um, oh, oh, awesome! Uh, they, they uh, the reason I bring this up is because we've had one noticeable earthquake that I've felt while I was here. Uh, Four point one, that was about fifteen miles from us at like one thirty in the morning, and I felt that it, the entire rest of the family was asleep. And we have here in Alaska, we have literally hundreds of earthquakes a day. They're usually under magnitude two point so you don't yeah. even notice it. Like your your dog probably wouldn't even spaz out about that shit. Two days ago, I was laying in bed upstairs, and we got a 
Well, we got a, a, a sizable one. Like I could feel the shake, and I was there. It lasted pr- probably a good forty-five seconds. Like it was a nice rolling mm. one. You know, it had a little shaky in the middle, and then a nice little yeah. roll and a yeah. little shake. And and so I texted the family. I was like, did you feel that? I'm gonna say I'm gonna call a five point oh. And they were all like, well, we didn't feel it. And the, the twins said they felt they they were feeling it as my text was coming through. So that's like, they, they're like ten miles away or whatever. Um, yeah. Sure as shit, five point two. Uh, about 60 miles wow. away, and it was awesome because I've always been a big fan of earthquakes. I know they can be deadly, and I know some people might be sensitive <laughs> about it because they blah, 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 don't care. I fucking love earthquakes. Yeah, they're Southern awesome. California, it's mean, like the they, ultimate they roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and, they, they, and they remind me. I mean, for me, they're awesome because it's like, it just, it just it reminds me that, yeah, no matter how much may, I feel, like no matter how much mankind feels like we have dominion over the earth, at any second, they're going to be like, you know what? Fuck you guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. just going to, yeah. <laughs> yep. See you guys later. You know, just <laughs> smooth. And so that's, you know, it's like. Yeah. With I mean, zero warning. It's like like a, a volcano starts spewing spit, you know, starts smoking. The, the, the snow starts melting and this. No, 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 no. It's just like, oh, by the way. Uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's and your they, annual they, dose of humility. <laughs> And they and they and they're thr- they are thrilling. I mean, even even when they're terrifying, they're yeah. still they're still pretty thrilling, you know, because it's like because it's the whole fucking like everything everything that you that you are used to being standing still and being stay safe and stay like oh we're we're off the plane we're on the ground yeah and it's like now that's the threat. We the we used to that, laugh. That, uh, <laughs> me and Squid used to laugh because new people would move into the apartment complex and you'd go in their house and they'd have had it all decorated, and anyone that had anything over a doorway, like oh you're new to California. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you. <laughs> Those, what those, you those Elvis plates, those aren't staying very yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure you take pictures because. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because those, those, those are that's yeah, that's, yeah, in, they... that's insurance money right there. That's what that is. That's yeah. gonna that's <laughs> gonna turn into insurance money. Um, Ken, uh, as much as we joke about it on this on this episode on this show, uh, you actually might have lost your voice a little bit, and made the world a better place for for a little while. So I almost never lose my voice, right? And we almost never, n- never not have a show. Is mm. that how? Am I saying that right? Never not. No. Uh, so last week uh, was wait, wait, wait. Is that three negatives? Two? Carry the one? I, never, I don't know. I. You can do the math. You figure it out. Is that know. is that like a exponent? Like a? Oh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Fuck it. Whatever. I'm so not we here didn't to have math. a show last week because of Thanksgiving, and. It was actually it was really perfect timing because the night before I lost my voice, I don't know why, but I just suddenly didn't have a fucking voice and oh nothing was, there nothing precipitated it. Well, the only thing that I can think of did you wake is, up with pubes in your mouth? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, not that. Look, look uh, I'm just no, I'm, help, the, I'm trying the, to help. The day here. before we had a we had a windstorm here the day before, and I don't know if you've ever been in New Mexico or Arizona or Texas. Uh, but when the wind blows, dust goes into the air and just gets everywhere. Well, here in New Mexico, in southern New Mexico, for sure, uh, that is very much the case. Like, it was like 50 mile an hour winds and shit, and dust this, was going you everywhere. You the salt flats right there, too, so I'm, I'm sure it's a little bit yeah. more stingy than just, it's, just normal dust. It's like oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's like it's salt water up. and dust at the same time. Yeah, it, it's it's really bad here. and. That's the only thing I can attribute to. But normally, like when the when the we get the dust storms like that, I get like you know sinus pressure and drainage and all this kind of stuff, like extra things to go with it. Dude, I didn't have anything, like not even a sore throat, nothing. The only symptom at all was no voice. No voice. Huh, it was the crazy. strangest, strangest shit ever. But it was it was perfect because we didn't have a show to do. So the only thing that I would have had to do is say grace at. Thanksgiving, but I don't say grace at Thanksgiving anymore. So, uh, yeah. so, so what, it all worked out. So what you're mm. saying is because we didn't have a show on Thanksgiving, we robbed all of our viewers of the perfect episode with you just sitting there looking ugly and not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the whole yes. uh, the whole face for radio, voice for mime thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, Mike, you've been writing songs though, because that's that's just what you do. Like. Is, yeah, there, is there I, ever a time when you're not writing a song? Do you is there ever a moment when you're like, you know what? I don't have any songs in work right now. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, there, there are. I, well, it's funny. So, so my whole songwriting dynamic has changed um, ever since I started doing Twitch because because I because you know because for me it takes it takes about six hours 
from start to finish for me to write on average for me to write a song. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll I'll poop one out in an hour and a half and then I'm like, you know, like but but for the most part it usually takes me two or three hours of of noodling around to figure out a chord progression and figure out a melody and figure out a lyrical perspective. And then once I've got that, then I have to tease out the remainder of the song and actually get it complete, you know? And it usually takes about six hours in total. Um, and, and, and so, but six hours coupled with, with the, I'm streaming now 22 to 24 hours a week. Uh, you know, and so I try to write, I try to write at least four or five days a week. So that's an, that's an additional 30 hours. And then on top of that, I'm also working on two full length records and I'm doing a song commission. And so the thing is like, so, so, um, so yeah, so my, so my songwriting process has kind of gotten a little bit disrupted. Um, but yes, I, I, I've written this year, um, I've written about, about 30 songs. So I, I'm, I'm way, I'm way behind what I, where I'd normally be by this point in the, in, in the year, but I'm, I'm also actively writing right now. So I should have another 15 to 20 by the end of December, mm. and then I'll, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same thing for January and the same thing for February, and then I'll look at kind of where I'm at. So so I should have I should have about anywhere between between 60 to 70, 80 songs by by February or March. Uh, new songs, you know, not not on records. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, just go ahead and be modest there and and limit that to 60 or 70. I mean. Well, I, uh, no, that's pretty I, impressive I mean, though. Like, like you're one of the, you're one of the, uh, rare talents that I've, I've only had the privilege to bump into, uh, you know, a couple times in my life where somebody that that's got that level of musical talent where you just, you know, you, you basically just can create a song just because you just feel like it right now. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, well, it's funny. It, it's, it's it, for me, I think, and, and I, and I, and I think that any, any professional that you run across that does creative stuff that that requires uh, a modica like both talent and 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 knowledge, like, like like and requires like some ability like like that a lot of it is just discipline. You just force yourself. You sit like like if you're a writer, you just sit down and write. And if even if you're not inspired, and even if you don't know where you're gonna go, you have to do it every single day. You have to sit down and write. And so the thing is like so and and that's the same thing I do. Like so so I will write a bunch of songs. I will write I will write eighty songs in a year and and 35 of them will be god awful but they're at least complete right. songs you know mm -hmm. i'm like here's a verse here's a chorus here's another verse here's another <laughs> chorus here's yeah. a shitty bridge and a shitty chorus and i'm done and now I, and, and i washed my hands of the song you know and <laughs> right, and right. sometimes and sometimes yeah. those songs i go back to them later on and it, they actually end up being pretty good you know I, I i was kind of shitting on them but the more i do it the better i get and so even my shitty songs kind of improve incrementally, you know, my shitty songs now are not nearly as shitty as they were, you know, your, your shitty songs now are way better than your good songs back then. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, kind of like man. our shows, like our, our shitty shows now are like way better than our amazing shows a hundred shows ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course our, our shitty shows are way better than anyone out there that's not actually putting a show out. So yeah, get off yeah, your, yeah, your ass and make something thing. happen. All you people that ask how we do this, just do it. <laughs> just keep doing it. Yeah. We're three years. In fact, that's good. Oh, I was no, going to say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Skype lag, man. God well, damn it, Skype. Yeah, we are three years into this show, and this is how far we've gotten. And uh, the reason why this show <laughs> isn't huge is because of discipline and availability, but that comes down to discipline as well. So fuck it. There you go. Mike's right. We're going to shut up now. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, no, no, I was, I was just saying, no, I mean, but, but yeah, but that's the thing is, is, is like just doing something consistently, even if you're not, even if you're not, you're not hitting all your marks and even if you're not, everything's not scripted and even the thing is, it's just doing it. Even if, even if you're just flying by the seat of your pants, you just keep doing it, you get better and everybody involved gets better and the whole, and everybody improves. So the thing is, so the key thing is just to start doing it and do it, you know, and you, and you learn as you, you learn as you go, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that's, yeah, man, I, I, I like, that's the one thing I proselytize to anybody that ever wants to do anything. Like I've been thinking about it. just do it. Just, Don't stop yeah. thinking about it. Just start, you know? Yeah. Um, hey, Kent, uh, you and I actually did something this week that we didn't plan on doing, uh, but we both did it. Rewatched the force awakens. Holy hey. crap. We did that too. Yeah. Well, um, uh, we, we, we didn't have it on our Plex library library and, uh, we couldn't find the disc. So my, my sister-in-law actually went out and just rebought it. Cause like, fuck it. Why not? It's like $10 at Walmart or whatever. Right. So she yeah. went out and rebought it and brought it home, and me and Sterling sat down and just watched it uh, unintentionally. Like it was just she turned it on, and I was taking something into the fridge, and then I just never went back upstairs. 
Yeah, that, um, that that tends to be my experience. Anytime anything Star Wars is playing, yeah. I don't mean to necessarily watch it, but I will sit down and I'm stuck on the couch yeah. until and it's done. I, is, so now that I've watched it probably five times, the, I have so many problems with it. So many problems. Really? But I got to tell you, the fact that I have problems with it only endears it to me even more. Because I, the more I've watched it, the more I understand the intent of it and the spirit of the movie. The, the Force Awakens is the original trilogy condensed down to one movie. Plain and simple. That's what it is. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, and, and, I, and, I, and, that's, and that for me is, is uh, I see what they were doing. And I, and I get the fact that they, that they were they're sort of pandering to their audience saying, look, we're going to give you what you expect. You know, like, so, so right now, right now, basically what it is for me, what it is, is it's, it's like a little promise, you mm. know, it's a little, it's like, look, this is, we know that this is the stuff that you guys like. Here's storytelling that you like. Here's the beats that you like. Here's the special effects that you like. Yeah. Here are characters that could blossom into something that you can fall in love with. Here's a little promise. Yeah. Now my hope is, is that the next movie delivers on that promise. Yeah. If it does, yeah. then I forgive Absolutely. them for all of the, Absolutely. all of the repetition, you know, but if they don't. Yeah. Then I go and I hunt them down. I, I, I tell you what, if, if if Ryan Johnson can pull through on this on this movie that's about to come out, I'm I'm at the point now where I'm willing to forgive the prequels. Yeah. Oh no! Wait! Wait! Oh, wait yeah. yeah. Like I'm I'm beyond. Like I'm I'm not I'm not mad at the what prequels, prequels anymore. It's, it's Episode one, two, and three. The uh, the shit. What are they called? The Revenge of the Sith and the the, the, the Jar Jar Binks trilogy. Yeah, the Jar Jar Binks trilogy. <laughs> I have, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Yeah, yeah so exactly. You're better off. Um, You're way I've better off. <laughs> I've never heard of these things. What are you talking about? These? <laughs> no, so the, the new movies, so The Force Awakens, mm. uh, the thing about it, like, yes, I understand the formula. I understand the beats and all of that stuff. And, you know, some people have problems with that. <clears throat> Brian Brushwood. <clears throat> um, a lot of people have problems with that, but I, I certainly don't. And one of the reasons why is that we were given – new characters that are like super endearing like ray finn poe bb8 like these are these are new these characters are new they're new people they're new characters for us to fall in love with and i absolutely love them and they're original they might be fulfilling roles that were previously hashed before but i mean come on what what brand of fiction is not a rehash of something else that has come before amen right yeah and, 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 well, and it's funny the thing is because because really truthfully you know it's like it's like you can see the i can see the the derivation like i can see that that uh you know that ray is sort of like a leia luke hybrid you know okay well and that's, right. you know, that's cool because mm -hmm. because the thing is like because they've also built some some backstory into her this missing family and she's got this native ability with the force you know like like that's oh you know but again luke had like so but the thing is, is but there's enough about her she's also like technically a wizard like that's awesome she's she's reed, reed richards meets luke skywalker meets you know like like that's awesome you know um yeah yeah. So I, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, so for me, like I can see, I can see where it all, you, you could definitely make a case for how, for all of the main characters are blends of characters that came before. But the thing is, is, but there's enough, again, like there's enough in there. There's enough, uh, like bones, there's enough sinew on the bones where I'm like, all right, maybe this can be an actual living, breathing entity and not a shit storm. Like these, like these priests, like these, uh, suggested movies that people keep talking about <laughs> yeah. exi the that they ex trilogy. exist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, um, and the, the chat room is bringing up rogue one. And I, 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 in, in my opinion, rogue one is a director's cut version away from being an excellent fucking movie. It's oh, the, really? Yeah. I, I think it missed, but only it like, it missed on the, the the smallest of 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 trajectories, but it missed very early. So it seems like it went way the hell out there. But it's it's very close to being an amazing movie, in my opinion. It's just there. It's Wait. a director's cut away. Like there's there's a to few me, scenes that need to be expanded and a few scenes that need to be cut down. To me, Rogue Wait. One was basically like a, a fantasy for me, like a fantasy come true sort of thing for me, because like all of the movies, like the the seven saga movies or whatever you know they're they're whatever but rogue one to me was basically like my uh like when i was a kid playing with my action figures like the little stories that i would come up with for my figures to play out like rogue one is one of those scenarios come to life mm. that's that's kind of why rogue one is so endearing to me is because it's 
Like it, it's really like that little kid fantasy put on the screen. Yeah, like I, you know, it, it, I love. No, it meant, it, well, you know, it's, it's funny. The thing is, is like, for, like for me, like, like, I, I, because I had no expectation. I didn't. I, I knew, I knew that it, that it was these guys get the plans for the Death Star. I knew that much, but I, I, I didn't know anything else. And I had, and I, I and I tried to pre- like insulate myself from outside perspectives. So I went. I literally went in not knowing anything. And and the thing is, is and I and, and I and I love I love Rogue One. Um, and the reason why the reason why for me was because it added gravitas to the fact that like like the thing is is it like 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 when when it, it added it added impact and it added it, and it accelerated like like literally when when Darth Vader shows up in a New Hope after watching when I watched New Hope after watching Rogue One I'm like oh yeah these guys are fu- he's hot on their fucking heels and that was awesome yeah. and then when and then when yep. Leia says you know good people died for this information i'm like fuck yeah they did you know like like not like good people like <laughs> yeah. whole families were wiped out for this you know mm. and the thing is yeah. like and then and then and then and the thing is, is and i loved and that was the one thing i was just 100% certain was not going to happen that did was everybody died every i'm like i'm like i fucking love the donnie yen character was fucking awesome the i'm one with the yeah. force the one force you know that was like that's so great and <laughs> the blind guy that kicks ass i'm like this is this is so he's an alien i don't know if you guys played the the original star wars role playing game but they had a they had yes. a, a character class that was there was alien student of the force and mm-hmm. i'm like yes! he's an alien student of the force that's so great you know and so it was just it was fucking so so it hit on so many points for me there definitely were I, there definitely were some story flaws and there definitely were some I, I i had some frustrations and and there were even some like like why the fuck do they do they store their why the fuck do they store their information on cartridges that you have to f- man, like physically like ret- like who, who uh, would it's, have a it's, weird, a, it's a MacGuffin weird it's a MacGuffin like, it's whatever it's, yeah it's a total MacGuffin like like oh yeah we have to like it's like it's like on Galaxy Quest they're like why are there the chompers and the slashers who designed this, <laughs> this is such bullshit you know? so there, there there are definitely moments like that throughout the movie where I'm like this is why would this happen you know but. But yep. but for the most part, I, I really lo- I love the characters and I love the fact I love the fact that that it, that it it it, cr- it gave a lot it gave value it added it added a lot of value to the st- to like this is what these people are, were have already been dying to 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 deal with this Death Star idea you know and so and the thing is like so yeah and so that for me that for me is what why I really dug it so maybe it's not a director's cut that I'm that I need maybe it's a rewatch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I haven't you, seen it since day of release in the theater. Yeah, oh, you dude, need me yes. and Mike to do to do commentary over the movie. <laughs> you'll like that version. <laughs> um, and with uh, w- w- with watching that man, there's a lot of new TV spots and shit like that for uh, the 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 Last Jedi. That's oh, about dude, to come out. I've, I've so only seen the first one, the one that I, I told you about that I sent to you. That's the only one I've seen. Or maybe you sent it to me. Either way, that's the only one I've seen. I haven't seen any others. Oh, dude, I am so stoked for the Last Jedi. I cannot <clears throat> wait, man. Like. First of all, I'm a sucker for anything Star Wars. I'm I'm gonna love it by default. Like you have to convince me to not love every second of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like by all accounts, man, like the Last Jedi is gonna be probably the greatest Star Wars movie ever made. I um, hope they so, are man. in love From with Ryan list- Johnson. Uh, I mean, enough to give him a n- a new three picture deal. Right. That that's it's- that to me is the most uh, the most hopeful thing about this. Forget the trailers and the teasers and everything else. They're giving Ryan Johnson a so uh, uh, supposedly non Skywalker trilogy to go yeah. to go play with on his own. Like, hey, we don't want you to do the last one here because we want you to start writing these three over here. Yeah, um, right. yeah. And that that to me that, that just shows so much fucking promise. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 and man, and for, like from uh, you know, Ken, from your lips to God's ears, man. Because because the thing is, like, really truthfully, like I, I I would love because the thing is, it's such a rich universe. And there's so many, like, like literally, you could tell stories in that universe. Add, like, it, it should be like the Star Wars. Like, I mean, that's Star Wars. It should be like Star Trek. There should be three or four shows happening in the Star Wars universe, kind of at all times. There should be yeah. at least one or two movies happening yep. because it, it's it's such a rich universe, and it's so sad that that like that they just kind of kept kept meandering, you know. And so my hope is is that like I, my hope is is that. Yeah, and, and it is. It's exceptionally promising. The fact, the fact that they, you know, it's it's going to be out in in less than a month, and they really have not even shown, like, they have not done a lot of like hyping of it. You know, they, like they're just yeah. now releasing like little cheat. Like the thing is, like they like that to me suggests, which is really funny because that that used to be like, oh, they're keeping it quiet. 
because they don't, you know, because it's not a good movie. <laughs> now, to me, it suggests that like it's like you know, Coco. They're like, this is going to be a fucking great movie, and we're just going to like, you know, we're going to let we're going to let people discover that for themselves. You know, we're not going to yeah. give them the entire movie, you know, in a trailer. You know, yeah. um, it, well, I mean, because the, the 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 Force Awakens, they gave us a, a teaser what like nine months out, like they just they finished filming in primary filming, and the next day they gave us a teaser. You know. And it was like this. Yeah. That's so fucking far out. And this time, it's just it's been on a normal schedule, a normal release schedule. And now we're just starting to get stuff two weeks out to kind of get that last minute hype build up. And the, the the Disney machine is going, and you know there's going to be you know the the figures are going to start showing up in the store soon. And you know like it, that 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 typical Disney machine is starting to roll. And they didn't give us something so far out that we we couldn't even yeah. see the fucking calendar from there. Well, you know, yeah. and here's another thing that I that I've been kind of observing but so with with this movie like i i cannot not watch the trailers like any trailer or tv spot that comes out like i'm going to watch it and i'm going to like examine every frame of this especially shit. the japanese ones that give us more information but, than the american ones yeah but I, but i but i stay away from like the news articles and shit like i don't right. want to like get these you know oh so and so leaked a thing like no fuck you i don't want that i'm not i'm not trying to get all the yep. spoilers but if you're going to give it to me in a trailer i'm going to gonna absorb this thing well apparently everyone knew about porgs like months before i did i never even knew what a fucking porg was until little, it was in the new trailer like a, a couple of weeks ago like two three weeks ago you're talking about the little uh living siren yeah the little like <laughs> it it's, looks like a um oh oh god what were those it, things called that um it looks like they, a they drop a hot, in ewok is what it looks like i'm, I, I'm they were hoping a hot it's Christmas item for a while when it, you know it would you could teach it oh, how to speak and shit yeah god uh damn it uh ah Steph Steph would know what it is. It? I, I i can't it's, think what it's, it's called. like a, it's, i want to say kirby or some shit like that is anyway Furby, a furby they're basically oh, yeah, yeah, furby. furby's oh yeah which yeah, which actually like Star Wars like, answer to Furbies? Like, how Furbies much you want to bet which, that there's going to be a a Star Wars branded Furby come out yeah. either like <laughs> yeah. this year or next year for Christmas? Like, uh, it's it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but so like all of this marketing about about Porgs has been out for a while, and I guess I'm just kind of a late comer to the game because they just now put them in trailers, and I, I was just I, kind I of non plus by so. them. I'm like, oh oh god, is this going to be another like? You know, is this like a cross Ewok. between Jar Jar and a Tribble? Like, what the fuck is this going to be? <laughs> the Tribble. <laughs> so, but I was I was actually encouraged with the latest TV spot that just came out a couple of days ago, and I linked it in the show notes. We'll we'll be sure to put this in the uh, the release notes for the for the podcast too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the latest TV spot, it's got the the scene from the from the new trailer with the Porg on the like basically the dashboard of the Millennium Falcon. There's like. But in this TV spot, Chewbacca it, like backhands this thing is like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Have you guys seen this? Mm-mm. No, no, no. It I've is been... the best. <laughs> like you guys, you guys got to check this thing out. And I, like I said, I linked it in the show notes. So yeah, we're not going to look... play it during the episode because last time we got in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> oh yeah, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, definitely check this out. Um, you can go to the Star Wars. Uh, uh, YouTube page and it should be the, like the the most recent video out there. Mm. It's like a it's like a twenty second or fifteen second TV spot and yeah, like no shit. Chewbacca is just backhanding this fucking poor right like right off of the Millennium Falcon's dashboard. Huh. Um, huh. So Back my shit up. So uh, with all this going on, uh, all, all this political shit going on, and all these like Matt Lauer got fired this week and stuff like that. Th- there's yeah. there's one name out of this whole thing that I think is just brilliant. And that's Gal Gadot uh, oh, yeah. saying she will not do a Wonder Woman sequel if uh, so-and-so is part of it in any way, shape, or form because he's a misogynist pig and he's been uh, a sexual yeah. assaultist or whatever. I don't care. I just want to keep watching Wonder Woman over and over again. Yeah, no, I mean, I, no, I, I, in fact, I just, I just re- recently rewatched it. I, I kind of, it's funny, I, 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 I put it on a couple times to fall asleep to and then I just stay awake the entire like I'm like fuck it's three in the morning now I got to be up at eight and you know it's three in the morning but uh, she's I because the thing is that there I have I I think I think that 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 there's probably multiple iterations of me in other universes that are married to her or something because I like I'm like I'm like she's like she's perfect for me she's obviously amazing right yeah no yeah no I I just I I could watch I could literally just watch her like like. Her smile is fucking electric. Her acting, like she's a great. She's 
she really delivers the character of Diana Prince. Like, yeah, it's a great, it's a yeah. really, really fun movie. I mean, I, I really feel, I feel at the, the end, like Aries, they, they totally missed the boat with Aries. If they, yep. if Aries had made a speech where he was like, look, he's like, they don't need me. Like humans do this, like, like I'm, yes, I'm the God of war, but they've been doing this to themselves. Like he could have made this, he could have made this very compelling argument for like, look, Diana, these people, they, they don't need, like, like, like you don't, you, you can't save them. They don't need saving. They are on, they are hell bent to on a road to destruction. And all we, like the thing is like, just look at what they're doing, you know? And like, he could have done this, like, like kind of like Satan, like tempting, you know, uh, uh, tempting Jesus kind of thing. And you know, and it could have been yeah. a real good, could have been a great moment of crisis of yep. faith for Diana. And, and I, I think that they missed that opportunity. And that's mm. the only, that's my only criticism of the movie is I was like, I was like, fuck man. Like I was yep. so certain it was going to happen because the, the writing was so excellent up to that moment. And then I'm like, Oh, they phoned this thing. in. all right, well, yeah. Aries was definitely the weak point of that entire thing. It was, it was such a great movie. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, maybe, maybe cause I'm not a, a big comic book guy. I didn't even, didn't even think about that. I just thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Did yeah, you, yeah, did you yeah. see the? Did you see the uh, the Justice League movie? Me? Yeah. Oh, he no. he knows yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not even gonna ask Amos. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I, it's, it's, it's actually sort of a miracle that I went to see Wonder Woman. I, 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 I was, I was, I had heard good things, and I, li and I liked a bunch of the creative staff on Wonder Woman, so I, 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 I took it the gamble and went to see it. But the thing is, DC, DC, other than, other than, because I actually worked for Warner Brothers Animation uh, in 2001. Um, other than the Warner Brothers Animation Department, which which have knocked it like like Superman, Batman, you know, a lot of the a lot of the animated stuff, they knocked that out of the park, and those things are those things are going to be classics and going to be watched, you know, 75 years from now. But um, but man, like you know, the thing is, is I mean, Batman, Batman Begins was a was a fine movie. It was a fine movie. I I I would definitely put it at like like I definitely would put it like equal to uh, the better of the X Men movies. But the Dark Knight, man, that was a that was a, that was a home run. That was an absolutely yes. Heath Ledger's performance is my, spectacular. Uh, like you know, um, no one else got in the way of of the rest. Like the, it, it was a totally fun story. Uh, but but everything else that DC has put out has just been for me, you know, as as a as a as a like tried and true comic book geek. Going back yeah. to seven years old, I still have three thousand. I sold most of my collection. I still have three thousand comics at my mom's place. You know, um, yeah. I just can't. I just couldn't. Yeah. I, it's I. Can't, it's just too tough. You know. Um, it hurt. It breaks my heart. You know. Yeah. I. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Um, for, for the I, for the record, the Dark Knight is the only one of that trilogy that I actually liked. Oh really? Yeah. The others, I I like. Yeah. Especially the first one was. It was so slow. I'm pretty sure I took three naps, and the last one yeah. just seems so far-fetched just didn't seem it didn't seem i couldn't uh, i couldn't escape reality with it but the second one with especially with heath, heath ledger is just amazing yeah yeah, I was yeah born in the dark. just, just <sighs> yeah yeah well i mean i mean this this was this was for me this was for me what like in fact it's really funny here this this is this is this is the perfect a b of why why i think i think warner brothers has lost has lost their way and why and why the dark knight works so well so so, so, so when, so, so I'm going to give you two scenes. So the first scene is, is the dark Knight when, uh, or no, no, I'm, no, I'm going to invert this. So, so, the, so the first scene is, is Batman. So, so flash goes, flashes with Batman. And he goes, Hey, what's your superpower? And Batman goes, I'm rich. And that's, oh, and it's, and everyone's like, ha ha, that's funny. But Batman, if you know Batman's character, he would never say that. He would never, he would never, he wouldn't crack a joke. Or if he cracked a joke, it would be very dark and it might take you, you'd be like, are you being funny? And then he wouldn't own up to being funny. He would <laughs> yeah. never, ever say, are, he would never, ever say, that I'm rich. Like, are, never. Like, are you like, being funny or are you just a dick right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and he would never even, like, the thing is, he would, he would, like, he would not, he wouldn't even, like, acknowledge that type of question. What's your superpower? Fuck you. I'm busy being, I'm busy taking care of the world. You little, you know, so thing is like, yeah. so, so, so that, so that just showed a fundamental misapprehension of his character. But then you go now, let's cut back, back to the Joker when the Joker meets two face. Right. And, and, and he, they're in the hospital and two faces, his face is burned away. And he's like, and now, and he's just, he's just becoming evil. And, and, uh, and, and, and two face, and he gives two face and he, get, and the Joker gives two face the gun and and the and the Joker goes, or, and Two Face goes, heads you heads you live, 
tails you you die and he, and he and he points the gun at joker and joker sits down and goes now we're talking and he grabs it and he puts the gun to his head because the thing is because and because right before that he's like i'm an agent of chaos and that's the thing is like the joker doesn't give a fuck and that's the why you can't beat him because he gives no fucks he is just yeah. going to fuck shit up mm -hmm. he, he sees that batman wants to maintain control and order and the joker is just there to fuck with that you know it's just beautiful and so and that was i think the really amazing thing about that you know that that movie so yeah uh, wait oh yeah oh, we are oh, we, we're spoiling movies if you guys haven't seen if you guys haven't <laughs> seen batman if you haven't seen yeah if you haven't seen uh the dark knight by now yeah then uh yeah second yeah as, as <laughs> yeah as tom merritt would say like the statute of limitations on spoilers is way past for that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly um <clears throat> so uh something went away that i cherished pretty much my entire computer life um yeah what um is it aol N no no uh, it does compu compu serve no compu -serve? It, it does date back that far but no no prodigy uh pro prodigy no no we're not talking GeoCities or angel fire either um no, yeah, just, <laughs> I was <gonna> next one. <laughs> so a long time ago i learned that if you want to test whether or not your 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 internet is working your internet connection is is live and viable you would go to purple.com and all that would show up on the page is a big purple page. Just, just purple, just, just purple, just HTML, purple background. There it is. That's it. Um, Your mom suggested porn, by the way. <laughs> no, uh, porn did not leave the internet. No, no. The, the whole point of it is that you had to go somewhere that nobody ever went to and nothing linked to purple. It, it had a block. For, if you went to from a different site or whatever else, it would actually block it and you'd have to refresh it so that it was a fresh call to the website and, um, it, huh. did, it didn't link to anything else. So you could go there because there's only one reason to go there, and that's to check your internet connection. Yeah. Huh. I've never heard of this before. Uh, right, because you're, you're, you're second-rate techie. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bonafides are being called into question. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, so not too long ago, I went there to check an internet connection on a computer I was working on. And it was a normal purple site, but then it had a little thing at the bottom saying, uh, purple uh, is undergoing changes, blah, 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 blah. To read more about it, read, click here. So, of course, I clicked there. And essentially, there's a bidding war between two different people, two companies, purple mattresses, and this other company called Purple Whatever. Um, and they were bidding to buy purple.com, the domain. Wow. And I don't know how much it went for, but purple mattresses bought it. So now if you go to purple.com, it takes you to a fucking mattress site. And now I'm yeah. out of my, my, I don't I, like, I'm at a loss. I don't know where to go now, except, except purple.com because nobody's buying purple mattresses. You know, I just go to speed, uh, speed Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, if you, the, the problem there is it'll still bring it up and it'll still faux run the page. If you don't have an internet connection, if, if you have settings set up certain ways in Java and flash, like there's, it's not a foolproof plan to do that. Like there are ways it'll still glitch and make it look like it's working. Going to purple.com no. was always like, nobody ever went to purple.com because there's nothing to, nothing to do there. It's just a big fucking purple site. I just, I just go to Pirate Bay and I look for all of Warner Brothers catalog <laughs> from 1970, <laughs> 1985. I just try downloading that. If it doesn't download, then I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did notice at Walmart that uh, Becker, the entire season, the entire series of Becker was only 35 bucks. I'm thinking that might be my <laughs> stocking <laughs> stuff for this year. Uh, cause I fucking love that show, man. I just, God, I love that show. Uh, which, but yeah. Which, which one's Becker? Uh, Becker was the one with, uh, was it Ted Danson? Oh he was a, yeah. He, wow. He was, my a, God. he was a doctor my that God, basically hated everybody. A, of a scab on my memory. <laughs> like that's crazy. The, is, is the introduction of, uh, Jorge Garcia, um, yeah, the eventually crazy. made it to lost. Yeah. Uh, that, that show, I, Every time I watch that show, it just it's it's this old dick that is an asshole to everybody, and for some reason his piece of shit receptionist still gets the better of him every single time. And I just I fucking love that show. Hey, Amos, uh, I know a thing that comes on every week that that, that features a couple of old dicks. Yeah, uh, it's the Ritual Misery podcast, what? and uh, I would I would recommend that our audience go to twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery and follow us. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, that would be an awesome thing. Or, and if you really enjoy the show, where can they? Where can people go to uh, really show their support for us? Oh, you're talking about that that thing over there that 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 thing where people can go and like actually 
put money in our pockets to help make this thing better and keep oh, going. Oh, the bar, the bar you guys own. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's a it's a yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, that's actually no, not, we, that's we, not we far like from the truth. It, to be honest, we like to call it if if you give a fuck, give a buck. Uh, yeah, Patreon.com yeah. slash Ritual Misery. <laughs> Cruise on by uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery. And uh, again, just like Ken said, if you give a fuck, give us a buck and help us make the show uh, just a little bit better. Yeah, uh, we awesome. really appreciate the support that our patrons give us. And uh, they get some additional stuff. They get pre shows, they get post shows, they get um, additional uh, stories and things in the in the treasure box, uh, some Amos poetry, all, all kinds of stuff. Cool stuff that is available only to the patrons. So uh, all that Amos you know, poetry. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. All that Amos poetry is right here waiting to be uh, uh, verified and uploaded. So put the awesome. kids, I, put, I, I had child labor laws violated a couple weeks ago and had all the kids <laughs> uh, type that stuff up. So, um, yeah, yeah this, is, uh, th- this, is, this is interesting. We are sitting at about 50 minutes of the show, and we just made it through the introductory block. <laughs> See, it's a good thing that we don't have the uh, the 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 games that we usually do. <laughs> right. I told you, it's fine. We've got plenty of material, and uh, yeah, we absolutely do. So, yeah, um, we we do have a few more things though. Um, normally, this would be where we we talk to our guest and ask our guest what's going on. So, Mike TV, what have you been up to uh, directly? Wow, man. Uh, yeah, you know, my, my days are jam packed. Um, uh, it's a lot of music. So I'm working on, I'm working on two full length records right now. Um, one is a 101 song album called Mike TV live where basically I, I, it's just, it's two acoustic guitars. They sound like one acoustic guitar because they're doubled. Right. So it's just a stereo spread acoustic guitar and one vocal. And it's just the set. It's the exactly the way I play songs when I do my Twitch stream. And I'm basically taking a, all, 101 of the songs that are requested with the most frequency, and I'm just putting together a 101 song. It's going to be about five and a half or six hours long um, album, you know. And then, uh, and then that's so that's that's the that's the next project that's going to drop. And then I'm doing another album that's going to be the next like full length Get Set Go record. And I decided that because I write as many songs as I do in a given year. I decided, fuck it, I'm just gonna start putting out like these mega records. So it'll be between 30 and 50 songs, you know, and it, it, they'll be full blown studio studio songs. But it, it'll just be, you know, it's just gonna be like so. So that's so that's 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 been a pretty titanic amount of work. But then on top of that, I've got the I'm streaming 22 to 24 hours a week um, via via my show Mike TV Live, and so so you know, and and then and then and then between guitar practice. And then song commissions and all of this stuff I do. Like my my schedule is jam packed from the moment I get up until usually around ten o'clock at night. And, and don't mind the fact that you just spent basically the last two months traveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, yeah, and yeah, and so and so then I I did I did I did TwitchCon, I did Nerdtacular, um, I I you know and then uh and then I've also um you know like obviously like like some holiday stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, so so I, I and all the while uh, have not missed two like, like you know like. During the during the, the times while I've been away, like the that the, while I've been out of town, you know, uh, uh, I didn't get much done, but I, I kind of made up, you know, once I got back, you know, like so, mm. so yeah, so it's it's been it's been a pretty it's it's been a complete shift of gears for me to like throw on onto my already busy schedule to throw on an additional 20, 20 plus hours of streaming each 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 you know week week, but uh, but it's been awesome. It's yeah. really been yeah, Twitch has been transformative for me. That's insane. It, it it really it's remarkable how much you're doing and how much time you're actually spending on Twitch and doing things. It's and then and then on Wednesdays you you're playing D and D, which I was yeah. supposed to be part of. And right after we made that and <laughs> I made my character, uh, it we I decided to plant a uh, a, a top secret, not not so much a secret anymore podcast right on Wednesday nights. So that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which by the way, uh, I have gotten clearance from the other two participants to go ahead and release that. So. I'm hoping awesome. to have the first three or four episodes of that ready to go before we are on next week. So I will have, um, I, I, w- I would like iTunes to approve it on like Wednesdays. So Thursday I, we can talk about it on the show and then get everybody to go through and download it. So it's got a little bit of a bump, you know, um, but th- expect that next week we will oh, yeah. be talking about that. Cause that's going to be awesome. For the, basically the first season of the show we're talking about is will have been recorded by then. And uh, I'm super excited for that. <clears throat> yeah. It's, great, it's, man. it's, 
if not historically accurate and true to the show, it's at least very fun. <laughs> Because that is yeah, with well, uh, it's with Richard Gunther and uh, uh, Jenny Josephson, um, yeah. And yeah, it's that is, that show is that's it. Man, that's that's fun. Do you it's, mind if I ask the premise, or is it or is it still top secret? We are uh, reviewing a TV show that clearly no one else on the entire internet has ever done a recap show of. Ah, cool. Uh, <laughs> with Richard you having, might, you yeah. may or may not be lying about that. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh! Is, With, is it is it is it the Simpsons or a Star Trek show? Fireflies? <laughs> is it yeah, yeah. Oh, near, oh, <laughs> almost almost? Uh, Richard has oh, never okay. seen it. Jenny has seen it multiple times all, the whole way through. Um, yeah. and then I've seen it. I'm at least caught up, and I've I've read the, some of the materials that it's sourced off of. So uh, we're all looking at through it through a different lens, and it's 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 a lot of fun. And Kent, uh, the last two episodes of the first season. Uh, are Richards to take the lead on? So, oh, yeah, 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 excellent. Exactly. Yeah, and, and everybody will know what I mean by that next week when we talk about it. Michael, I'll, I'll tell you after after the show. Cause cool. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, that that's uh, that's that's working. Uh, we got we got theme music, of course, by Kevin McLeod, because why not? Oh. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, God, it's is he so is Kevin fun. related to Connor McLeod at all? Uh, you know, we should ask him when we had him on the show. Yeah, yeah, we should have seriously. asked him. Uh, I bet he is, though. I mean, he kind of has to be, right? But then again, there can be only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, like, so, so that's not that's not too good. If uh, yeah, uh, well, maybe maybe he is the one. Maybe. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Who's to say that, that mean, Ketter, uh, Kevin is not Connor? Yeah, it's, yeah, Kevin of uh-huh, Clan uh-huh. McLeod. And and think about it, man. These things are are, are uh, transmissive, right? So you don't know exactly how many there are left because every time you think you're on the last one, another one just randomly fucking pops up. So yeah, yeah, ma- yeah maybe yeah, maybe Kevin's uh, just waiting for his time to to rise to the to the, to the challenge. Yeah. What killed me? What killed me about those movies? Like the the first movie, right? Like it was a it was a neat like self-contained thing right like that was the end like he had the quickening yeah. at the end like he was the winner yeah right? yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he lives forever he lives forever a, in, until it made money in in hollywood <laughs> yeah apparently there's more and it's like what the fuck and then we can have a whole tv show about it. like what the fuck and it's all supposedly all in continuity together is like, oh my god um yeah that, that's <sighs> just do what i do uh, just 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 realize that those that they don't exist and the show didn't exist you know that it's just the first movie and then the world is perfect <laughs> yeah and that, that's the one that had um uh sean connery in it right wasn't uh, he like yeah. the like the old selective amnesia sort of, is a wonderful no, yeah wait, no no uh my name is uh my name is something ramirez uh oh curses i i used to know the quote i'm something ramirez uh uh, metallurgist, chief metallurgist of the King of Spain. Uh, shit, yes. man, I used to be able to quote. I used to be able to quote a whole bunch of that movie. And mm. I, uh, my name is Inigo Montoya. You yeah, my yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Um, the Highlander series. Or for those that don't know what the fuck we're talking about, we're talking about the Highlander. Series. If, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, I don't. I. I, I Talk about then just you know just turn this show off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't go yeah, that far. I mean, no, no. If, if you know nascent geeks in there, if you, you know, if you don't know what we're talking about, you really need to watch this show more often. That's where I'm going with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you, you can turn this show off and just head over to Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, um, this happened this week. I just want to. I just. I, I gotta. I gotta share this. Uh, oh shit! Where'd the picture go? They took the picture down. What a bunch of pieces of shit. I don't think this iteration of the article actually ever had the picture. Oh, oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I, know. <laughs> I know. All right, fuck it. So the Navy drew some drew a big ass dick in this guy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I, 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 so Mike, what what did you think? What did you think about this story? Where, where the uh, a Navy pilot drew a, a dick in the sky? I think I think that it's. I feel that it's important that everybody draw at least one dick in the sky before they die. You know, like, like this guy got it off his bucket list. Right. You know, the thing is, is it like he has, he has a fucking Navy jet. It, like he, he, he is, he has been fueled up with probably $40,000 worth of fuel. You know, he's, he, they're sending him into the sky. Like what else are you going to fucking do? The thing is, is it, it makes perfect sense. You know, and even if you have to get docked, even if you, even if he gets docked, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, if he get if he gets demoted a, a rank or two, you know, if they take him off piloting for a little while, 
it's worth it because he can say like, hey, man, I drew a dick of this guy with a fucking, you know, $22 billion jet Dude. aircraft, you know, yeah. and I wasted $40,000 right, so, in fuel doing it. So I don't, I don't know a whole lot about the Navy, but I do know a lot about fighter pilots because mm -hmm. I work with them every single day. And um, I, I, I know for sure that back at the squadron, they were high-fiving each other. I, I Even bet. after, yeah, I like, especially when this thing hit the news. In, in the like the tweets, the the photos were going viral and shit. Like this motherfucker got more high fives and drinks bought for him Amen. than any any time in his fucking life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I it's funny. I this I has know. to be a dare, right? This has to be the re response. Oh, it had to, to be. Dare. This is no, not this a. Air crew, this air crew got grounded for this, mm -hmm. but I have to think that they were they were grounded. They were probably given like free time off, like. You guys fucking like you guys fucking nailed it. Uh, you know, go take take a week off. Go go have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll you, deal you with don't, the rest in your absence. You don't punish people for this. You 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 quietly let them have a week of of retrospection and and you know uh, uh planning a, a a safety presentation for the next big squadron meeting and then you just move on with your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, for my, I mean, there you ha there has to have been like. You can't tell me that whoever was their like their ultimate superior officer. That's not obviously not the president or like you know like, but somebody that's like the the, the person, the capital D two D capo at wherever their their station. Yeah, it's like their that guy. That guy probably, has yeah. to have gotten a good chuckle out of it, right? Mm. The thing is, is that like oh, like you can't tell me no matter no matter your gender, whatever the thing is, it's a fucking dick pic in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> drawn in yeah. by a fucking giant like it's fucking awesome like, with it's, precision it's awesome. like this Come isn't on. just some jagged like it had two like semi-symmetrical testicles and a big like yeah. the, the shaft was two parallel face. lines like yeah. It, yeah. that's what you do yeah, you, you, you have these people break down exactly their flight plan and how they design their flight plan plan and do that for the next training meeting and that that's their punishment <laughs> It, 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 I just I like I I it, I get so tired of people getting offended with the stupidest shit. And I showed this to my 87 year old mo grandmother in law, and she laughed her ass off. Awesome. Like, yeah, if good. she if she can take the joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, that's, mom that, says, that, that, yeah, it's that a bird. That it's a plane. Fall nope, on, fall on, the, on the side of like, like if you if you get offended by this, even if you got kids, the thing is, is that like, look, if you if you if you've got girls. And and they're straight. They're gonna end up seeing one at some point in time in their life. You know, if you got a guy, he's seen it since literally the moment he was born. So things like so. Yeah. No matter how you slice it, if you something we all encounter throughout our entire lives, it's nothing to be weirded out about. And you're the one making it the problem by freaking out about it. So if, just you know, if you have a girl, yourself. if you have a girl and she's not straight, seeing this is probably why. Seeing one of those is probably yeah. why she's not straight. The yeah, ugly, yeah, yeah, ugly yeah. nasty, gross fucking penises. That's why they're not straight. That's that's not true, but it's funny as hell to think about. Um, uh, so good. Hey, uh, Kent, you chose some awkward timing to start watching House of Cards, man. That's uh... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the weird thing. So, Amos, you've been yelling at me for like two or three years now. Like, why the uh, fuck are you not five, watching House yeah. of Cards? And I was like, it's on my list, bro. I'm gonna get to it. I finally got to it, and uh, it just happened to be like when Kevin Spacey is like like the biggest asshole in Hollywood. Um, you know, so my, my stance on the whole thing, like, you know, uh, shame on Kevin Spacey. Um, that sucks that, um, that he did all that, but he also did some great things with, um, house of cards and mm -hmm. in my brain, I don't know, right or wrong in my brain. I separate the things. I separate the art from the artist. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Is... I'll tell you this. I was I got in the truck the other day, um, driving it to the uh, d to the dealership to get some work done. You know, oil change, all that kind of stuff. And I, th the stereo just picked up a random track out of my library, and it was Louis C.K. Uh, not the chewed up concert, but a different one. And yeah. I didn't care. I just sat there and laughed my ass off at these funny fucking jokes that I've heard uh, dozens of times, and I'm going to continue to laugh at because it's funny shit. Uh, it was sure. a little awkward at one point where he was talking about uh, showing his dick to the uh, girl with the Down syndrome, uh, but other than that, it was <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah, that, you know, <laughs> yeah, that happens. And, 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 that, that happens. and that definitely does. Like, like that, you know, and, and it's funny because the thing is, is it like like if it's good art, if it's good art, no matter what you do, the thing is, is that you you have to throw you you always have to kind of give little peeks into your deepest and darkest and most 
fearful secrets. The thing is, is like that's the only way that you that you tap into the those truths that that resonate with everybody because they also tap into all of our deepest and darkest fears and secrets and stuff like that. You know, but mm-hmm. the thing is like, but but when you are somebody, like I think it's, it, it's funny. So the thing is like, so I I definitely. I definitely, I, I love House Guards and I fucking, and, I, and, and Kevin uh, Spacey as an actor is amazing, you know, and I fucking love Sui, Louis C.K. And, and, and I, and I really do appreciate all the stuff that Al Franken's done. And, you know, like, like the thing is, like, but at the same, at, at the same time, the thing is, is that like, and, and this is the one, this is, it's really funny. This is the one thing that I have to say about, about all these guys is, you know, they're take like, well, okay. Kevin Spacey took a, a tiny bit of ownership of it. You know, the really great thing is, is like Louis C.K. was like, yeah, man, you know, like I, I did, it's fucked up. I did it, you know, like, like whatever, you know, that's, that's, I yeah. think it's like, because, because the thing is, because that's the beginning, that's the beginning of, that's the beginning of, you know, you, you kind of figure your shit out. You go back and, yeah. and say, Hey, look, well, look, I took thing, ownership the, of this. I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this stuff and it's not going to happen. And let me get back in, in the game. And the thing is, like, yeah. and well, the only way that happens about Louis is C.K.'s, if, the thing about Louis C.K.'s response is not only did he take ownership. But he also he added to the conversation. Yeah, he he wasn't just saying like, "Yep, did it, sorry," and walk away. Like he he talked about like, you know, b- being in a position of power. Like you know, this is something that I didn't realize that I was being a dickhead at the time, because I always asked permission. But what I realized yeah, later is that they didn't have a choice. Yeah, I yeah. thought I was giving them a choice, but they didn't have a choice because they yeah. were looking to me for. As, or, an, as an influence, um, as, as the a person. Balance of power was yeah. so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This, the thing about this to me, and I, I'm, I don't want to sound, I'm looking directly at the camera because I want you to understand. I don't want to sound, um, I don't want this to come across in a bad way, but I think it needs to be said. Right now is a time for every dick swinging male out there to look back at every sexual encounter they've ever had and think about it consider the consequence of that encounter what led up to it how it how it it progressed through and how it resolved and re reevaluate if anything if 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 anyone was taking advantage of it of in that situation intentionally or not because i know for me this is i mean I, I can after all this started coming out and i started doing some introspection there are a few times when i'm like you know that that could have i didn't mean at the time but that could have been perceived where I, you know, I was leveraging a position or, or I was leveraging something, some aspect of it, or, you know, I bought dinner. So she might, might've expected me to expect her to put out, you know, like, yeah, I, I've never, I've never raped. Any, I was talking, talking to Richard about this uh, yesterday. <laughs> I've never raped anybody. I've never intentionally right. sexually assaulted or sexually harassed anybody, but there are times when I could see that someone would have perceived it or could have perceived it in that way. Uh, with, with the with the with the proper view on it or whatever, and it hurts to know that that was there. But I'm sure I'm I know I'm not the only dude who felt completely innocent at the time, but can understand how something like that might have been perceived a completely different way than how I perceived it at the time. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think we're okay. kind of in like in a like an awakening period, I guess. Like because like humanity kind of goes through different uh, versions of this, like throughout history, right? Like like you know realizing. That you know, it's uh, it's bad to have slaves. You know, like like there's different like moments well, we used of to. We used to know that we're we're losing sight of that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there's there's different there's different moments like epiphanies basically. And um, I think we're as Americans at least, I think we're we're kind of going through one of those right now with this like this idea that you know dudes are major fucking assholes to women and um. Not all dudes, uh, like but probably us, most not of like, them. Not just the fucking rapists. Like all of us <laughs> yeah. are well, dickheads. I mean, I mean, well, it's funny. It's funny because the thing is, is that like so, and 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 I think that's the 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 thing between that separates adults from kids, right? And there are a lot of people walking around the earth with in adult bodies, but that effectively have a a, a childlike understanding of the world and a childlike way in which they interact with the world, including certain people at high echelons of power all throughout the country in, in, from the entertainment industry all the way into the White House and politics and what have you. So the thing is, is like, and so, for, and the, the, the key thing is, is that like, I think the thing that separates an adult from somebody that, that has no impulse control is that, is because as men, as men, we are literally hardwired. I cannot tell you how many single times I have to check myself because there's some beautiful girl walking by and I'm, and I just want to like, I just wanted like I just want to like 
ogle her and be like, and just imagine the terrible things I, I could do to her, you know, like, because that's, because yeah. that's, it's, and it's literally how I'm hardwired. And then, as, and so, and, but as now as an adult, I recognize that if I do that, if I make, if other than making eye connection and smiling and, and seeing if that's, it's, the thing is, it's, 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 I realize that as I've gotten older, that all this stuff requires little checks of, is this okay? So mm -hmm. I make eye contact. If they don't want to make eye contact with me, I don't get offended. Okay. Because, because they've been like, because women there since, since they were very young kids have been sexualized and threatened in this way, they've learned they they've learned these intense defense mechanisms. So so if I look at somebody and they don't make eye contact, all right. But if I look at if I look at them and and they make eye contact and I smile and they smile, then hey, I, I'll say hello, you know. And the thing is, and it starts from there. And every single step of my interaction with them is me checking myself and making sure that everything is being, you know. And the thing is, and and I definitely know. And that's the thing is like I and, and I I am I'm a rock and roll guy, you know. I I have fans. I've been I've been in nightclubs. I've just like when you, when someone steps up on a stage, like I, I there have been girls that I've looked at and I'm like, oh, she's all right." And the moment she got up on stage and she strapped on a guitar and started singing, I'm like, "She is the Venus of like I am in love with this girl." You know, so the thing is so I, I I recognize that that's also that's also inverted, you know? So the thing is so when I step off stage and I'm talking to some girl, I, I like I have to, I, like it, it I, and I didn't it took me a long time to re really come to terms with that like no, the thing is like, yeah, I took her to bed and I took her to bed because she was in love. She was into an idea that she, that I, I was not, she didn't even see me as me. She saw me as this, you know, this entity, you know? And so, so it took me a while to realize, yeah. it, it took me, a, it took me a time to realize that like, yeah, and that's why these relationships are not working is because, because they're built on a false premise, you know? And if I want to have a decent and strong, like I should be like, Hey, you're ultra hot. Let's go out tomorrow and let's go, like, let's start on a neutral ground and sort of build from there, you know? So the thing is, like, but it, it, I mean, it took me 37, 38 years to get to that point in time, you know? And, and even so, yeah. and so, even still. So yesterday, I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It took, it took me until three years from now. <laughs> in three years, I'll, <laughs> right. I'll finally yeah. Yeah. listen. Yeah. Three years from now, Mike's going to be taking a shit and having an epiphany. <laughs> My, oh my, my God! The, the the question that comes up to up to my mind on this though is, where is the line? Where is I mean, knowing that these these you know that I that there may have been that perception in the past. Should I now come out and like write these women letters? You know, or like w w I mean, how that, like where it's it's that it's funny. You know? that yeah no, and it's funny because the thing is is like so so if if it, uh. The thing is, the thing is, is that like, is like, uh, and I, and I've, and I've spent some time kind of contemplating that. Cause I, cause I, I too have been in, I've been in so many crazy and scandalous situations. The thing is like, so for me, so for me, the way I look at it is, is it, does it, does it, if me reaching out to them and me like, uh, like, so, so I, and so what usually what, usually what I've done is I've reached out to girls that, that like I've known we ended up in, in, in under bad circumstances. I will reach out and be like, Hey, just wanted to say hello. Like, are you interested in? being my friend or you're interested in reestablishing a connection. If they don't respond, then, then I know, then I know that, 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 all right, then that's, then that's, it's going to be too painful to even bring up that stuff. You know, the thing is, is like, you know, and, and the thing is, is like, and, and the stuff that I've done and I've definitely done some shitty stuff to people, um, you know, um, you know, I'm, and, and I too have never, I've never, I've never raped anybody, but the thing is, is, but I've definitely, I've definitely done some fucking shitty shit, like shitty stuff, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and the thing is, is like, and if, and if, and if it comes up, like, and if, if someone at some point in time goes, Hey, you know, 25 years ago when, you know, you know, when you were in your twenties, you know, this happened, the thing is I'll, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know what? You're right. It did. And the thing is like, and the thing is, and I, and I, and I'll take ownership and I'll be like, look, and I didn't, I didn't, I, I tried reaching out to you. You didn't respond or, or I didn't try reaching out to you. Cause I knew it was, I knew I, I didn't want to. I figured you moved on. I, I figured it was going to be too painful. And the thing is like, and sometimes you just have to like. You have to like, just kind of yeah. like, you know, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fucking sticky wicket and there's no real, I don't think there's any playbook that you can follow. Right. You know, right. it's like each person's going to be different. Each situation is going to be different. That's just something I think that we should really, I mean, especially the dudes. Cause I know, I know I can't speak for any woman in the world right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no, so, uh, but as, as a dude, I, that's just something that we should be thinking about. And especially when all these allegations, stuff like that come out just kind of keep that in your mind yeah. that, perceptions are a lot well, of 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 the conversation yeah yeah and and my my thing is like 
don't dwell so much on what you've already done. Like, don't don't stress stress too much about the thing that you did 10, 15 years ago. Like, oh, my God, should I, should I, you know, whatever. No, just think about today's a new day. Like, we're starting now. This is fresh now. I have a different perspective now. What am I doing today? What am I doing tomorrow that's going to create, like, discomfort or, you know, a, a, a difficult situation for, you know, this woman that I'm talking to or or, you know, whatever, the, the, the people that are listening to me right now. Um, just moving forward, we need to be better than we were. Mm. So, like, I, I think all three of us can can pretty safely say that, you know, we've said some things, done some things that, you know, we wouldn't be proud of if they were just, you know, let's say somebody caught them on video and they're just, just displaying them right now, like putting them on our Twitter account or something. Um, yeah, like, that's the case. So, moving forward... Let's be better today and tomorrow than what we were. Yeah. I, I will say that, that the one person I think I ever really truly wronged was uh, Jennifer Fell, and I actually wrote her a letter apologizing after the fact and I heard <laughs> back from her. So, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's, high school girlfriends it, can be like that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, no, yeah. speaking of twenty-five years ago. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that that I, I actually reached out to a girlfriend that that um, an old girlfriend, uh, and, and apologizing over stuff that had just kind of happened and being like, look, you know, like like like. And, uh, and, and we, and we reconnected and things seemed to be going fine. And then, and then she just kind of like, like, you know, like, like, you know, stuff, she flipped out and I was like, I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, I, I'm so sorry. Like I should, this, we should, I should have never done this. You know, we should just like, we should let, just let, 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 let sleeping dogs lie, you know? Right. Um, yeah, man, it just, you know, it sucks. It's, uh, it, it's funny. Like I spend my days now trying to, you know, the whole do no harm thing. You know, I, I do, I try to like walk very delicately and I try to I try to measure the things that I say and the way the ways that I interact with people. And I try to be as openly and honest as I possibly can, because the thing is, is that like because, you know, because because you can you can find so it's so easy to lie to yourself. It's so easy to build a false narrative and then pursue that false narrative in off a cliff, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I uh, I pretty much just avoid people because I'm still trying to figure out how to be a good dad and a good husband. So <laughs> yeah, until I figure those out, I I, I got no. Uh, I, yeah, don't, don't I interact no, with any other people. No, no. <laughs> I'm the guy that checks out at Walmart without saying anything. Mm. Mm. All right, mm. so I've I've got I've got two things to add to to this show, and then I'm gonna be ready to move on to um, you know like where can we find you? Um, real quick, you guys know about this Apple exploit that happened, right? That it's been in uh, a Mac OS high Sierra. You guys know about this? No. Mm -mm. So it's like a fucking root level fucking exploit that Apple devs just completely overlooked where you can get root access without a password. You basically just open up the login screen, put root as the username, no password, just log the fuck in and you've got root fucking power on Mac OS High Sierra. Really? Go fucking update your Macs right now because the, the update is available. This was made public is, like two days ago. You know the beautiful the, thing about this is for for years we've talked about how shitty Windows is and how many viruses it has. Uh, yeah. Apple didn't need viruses. They fucked it up themselves. <laughs> yeah, dude, like because I've been I've been a pretty pretty staunch like supporter like not supporter well obviously a supporter but but a like in def I will come in defense of Apple like like dude yeah like these guys like you're not gonna get a virus on them because of X Y and Z and then look at the file structure and this is so much better than the way that Windows does. It. Oh my God! What the fuck, Apple? Like you <laughs> fucked up bad. Uh, but luckily, there is there is a, a, a update available. Like it's it's fixed. It's fixed. Update your shit. Go to your software update. Fucking fix the shit. All right. So that was my number one. Number two, we have the New Year's Eve streamathon mm. uh, coming up on New Year's Eve. Please go to ritualmisery.com slash twenty seventeen streamathon. So two zero one seven streamathon. streamathon. S T R E A M A T H O N ritual misery.com slash 2017 streamathon to get all of the information and the links to the signup sheet. We still are short a few streamers uh, to fill up our schedule. So if you have ever wanted to stream anything, if you're a current streamer and um, you, you want to participate and raise some money uh, for people that need um, uh, 
organ donations and things like that. Um, yeah, like the, the New Year's Eve Streamathon is like the coolest thing that we do. We do it every year, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, just head over there. Uh, there's going to be a link in the show notes for uh, anybody that didn't catch the uh, URL. Uh, go check it out. That's it's, it. It's New, Year's else Eve, got? it's New Year's Eve on a New Year's Day? Uh, it, yes, it, it's, it's a 27, it's, it's hours, 27 hours to cover all 26 plus time change uh, day changes. Oh, Oh, okay. So, uh, in the Western, in, in the United States. Uh, no, uh, worldwide. In, we 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 oh, uh, we, we stream oh. for twenty seven hours because there are twenty six hours twenty six time zones. Yeah. Oh, well, so, oh, you so, oh, are you starting at like UTC zero and then just kind of going all uh, through? UTC negative thirty, like thirty okay. minutes before the oh, first okay. one, and it goes on until thirty thirty minutes after the last one. Yeah. So, so it, it begins at like 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 zero four hundred, like so like four a.m. or some shit East Coast time, I think. Mm on the 31st and then it goes through like i think 6 a.m or something like that it's on, something ridiculous on new year's day um but yeah. the premise is wow. that no matter where you are in the world you don't have to spend new year's eve alone and we have an active chat room awesome um we have uh, a, don a, a place to donate money to um last year we had prizes for the donors this year we, we didn't add that complication because it didn't work out so well <laughs> last year um, but the, the, the overall premise, uh, originally I did it for 24 hours and 24 minutes to make sure that no one had to spend new year's Eve alone. The first year, uh, last yeah. year was the second year made it an annual event. And this year we're just going to continue that spirit on last year. Yeah. We had people like Christy Cates, uh, doing her, her own music for the first time. Uh, we had, uh, the gen officially introduced. We had, we're about ready to have a, have a little segment by the have a drink people. And it was their first video time. Um, and it was just That's amazing. Awesome. And this year we're hoping to fill it up again. And um keep up that that tradition awesome awesome oh yeah so speaking of uh, have a drink show uh last week or uh not last week but two weeks ago we debuted the have a drink segment on this show do we have one this week amos we do is this uh, okay is this gonna be running for a second can i go grab a beer no. while this is running go ahead it's got a minute and 23 awesome hooray <laughs> hey guys chris here from have a drink so I had a couple things we wanted to throw at you all. Uh, we stumbled across a news story on our most recent episode that we would feel remiss if we did not inform you that uh, anyone living within the Houston, Texas area has a chance at free beer for life, courtesy of St. Arnold Brewing. So they've started the St. Arnold Society coming out of their new tap room. It's going to be in downtown. And for a $1,000 fee, yeah, it sounds high, but you get a $150 pewter mug also with that, with your name engraved on it, and a free beer every day for the rest of your life. That uh, seems to be a pretty good deal, I think, because, yeah, I could earn that back in about a year. And also had to share with you guys my favorite seasonal beer. You've got Celebration Fresh Hop IPA from Sierra Nevada. So unlike a lot of uh, seasonals around this time of year, which are usually spiced in their stouts or porters or something, Sierra Nevada kind of gave everyone a big middle finger and went with a fresh wet hop IPA. So wet hop is essentially they pull them right off the vine from harvest and take them straight in and start brewing, where the rest of the year uh, they're using dried out hop nuggets. So these bad boys are fresh and good and in your face. Uh, according to Beer Advocate, they give it a 4.15 rating of exceptional. So cheers, guys. There we go. Yeah, right that on. is awesome. And and Chris, so you know anybody that watches this show knows my love for the Have a Drinks folks. Uh but yeah, Sierra Nevada is also one of my favorite breweries. So Chris giving a, a big shout out to Sierra Nevada. Like that was I loved that segment. That was awesome. So that uh yeah. Are you a Sierra Nevada fan or an IPA fan, Mike? I'm it's funny. I I I was um uh it was, I was a big fan of, of, of full flavored beers, um, uh, until, until, uh, I quit, I, I, you know, I was, cause well, I was, well, I was a drug addict effectively. And, and when I, and when I, uh, I took, I was six years sober and, and I, and, and I was like, okay, I've kind of reestablished my roots and I'm all good to go. And so let me, like, and my girlfriend was like, let me, you know, like I want to start drinking again. All right. So we start drinking and, and, uh, I went back to the beers I liked and, and they just tasted like my partying days. And so I was like, so I, I ended up, yeah. So, so I've been slowly, but surely kind of coming back to them 
because there's so many breweries here in Austin. So I've been slowly but surely kind of make dipping my feet into kind of more full flavored beers. But but for the most part, I've basically stuck to like Kolsch's and Pilsner's and lagers just because they they're the most they're the least reminiscent of the stuff that I, you know, I encountered when I was a when I was a madman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Mike, uh, if if people don't already follow you in all the places, where would they go to find more of what you do? Um, uh, you know, so so if you want to catch me live, um, and you don't live in Austin, well, I, I haven't I haven't played I've only I haven't played a show in Austin in, in a couple of years. So uh, if you want to catch me live, um, you can find me at, at, on Twitch TV. Uh, it's it's the forward slash Mike TV live. So it's pretty easy, Mike TV live. Um, I stream actually, I stream five days a week. Um, on Wednesdays, I actually stream for eight hours. Um, uh, so yeah, so I, 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 most of it is music. I, I do a D and D stream on Wednesday nights, but, uh, but I actually, but otherwise it's, it's all music. Um, and my community is amazing. A lot of them are diamond club people, but I also have a whole bunch of people that, that have been fans for, for years and years and years. And I have a bunch of new people. And, and the great thing about Twitch is that you, you know, you also get a bunch of randos that roll in and, and, uh, so we've been building a pretty, a pretty awesome little community of people, uh, built around that show. So that's been nice. Um, so if you want to catch me live, that's where you find me. If you want to, if you want to listen to the music, um, or if you want to like, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to be on the bleeding edge of my stuff, cause I'm writing new music right now. And if you want to have access to all of that, you don't even have to become a patron of mine, but I do have pay, a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash get, get set go, which is the name of the band. Um, so it's G E T S E T G O. So get set go. Um, and, and if you just go there, um, I, I, every week I, I, I make a post and I, and I basically give you guys access to all of the stuff I've done that week. So usually there's a couple new songs. There is, you know, I'm pushing these albums forward. So when I get new mixes of, of albums, tracks, I put those on there. Um, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I work, I, I work easily 70 to 80 hours a week and all of the work I do makes it into some, like you can find it either from, from Patreon or, or, or Twitch or, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of everywhere. Yep. Um, and so there's puppy pits. We were, we were talking earlier, um, yeah. with, with the, uh, uh, streamathon where we're going to raise money for, for charity. But, um, do you have, uh, uh, interest of that's special to you that you want to help raise awareness and maybe raise some money for? So, yeah, well, I mean, well, so yeah, in fact, so I, this is, I'm going to, I, I, I've been, I've been, so my, my little my little cousin, I know, I know uh, some of you might, might even, if some of you are, uh, show up in my stream at all, you might be aware of my little cousin, Riley Rose. Uh, she's six years old now. She was diagnosed a year ago with stage four neuroblastoma, which is obviously cancer. It's stage four sort of metastasized all throughout her body. Um, she, she was, she's been battling it with, with chemotherapy and with radiation treatment. And about four months ago, um, she was declared NED, NED, which is no evidence of disease. So everybody was really excited. It, it, it had been driven from her body, um, but she still had to, she still had to maintain chemotherapy for two years to to make sure that it doesn't return. Um, she, you know, d intermittently she would she would do C like various scans just to make sure that she's fine. And and just yesterday they they discovered that she still had, that can the cancer has returned. Um, she, there's no, there's no, they can't do anything else for her. She's already gone. She, her body can't take more radiation and chemotherapy. She's just, she's, she's, she, I mean, so, um, so, uh, so she's, yeah, so she's, so they're, so my, the, my family is getting ready to like, they're just going to make sure that she, her last days are, are awesome and filled with joy. And, um, so the thing is like, so, um, so yeah, so I so I was just thinking like the thing is is it like obviously children's cancer research. Like the thing is is it like yeah, I don't I don't I don't even I I just I don't even there's there I know there are ways that, to help out. Um, the, the, I, there's the, there's the children cancer uh, cancer uh, there's actually the children cancer research fund. There's a bunch of other like say the St. Jude's. There's there's a bunch of different places that actually specialize in 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 child care specifically regarding cancer and um, yeah. But the thing is, is it like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll throw up some um, some links in the show notes of places that you can go to donate uh, to help prevent these um, these things in the future for future generations of of children. 
research for uh, finding cures and things like that. Um, yeah, that's um, that's incredible. My my heart goes out to your family, Mike. Um, yeah, man. You know, it, yeah, it's it's uh, it, you know it, it you know it it was a real kick in the nuts. Um, in in the most like, I I. I I spent I spent uh, I spent most of the day kind of freaked out freaking out about it. Um, I'm sort of like a, a little bit taxed right now, but um, I, I I just can't. My my I'm you know she's she's five years she's six years old now. So I she my relationship with her was when she was much younger because I've been living in Austin for the past three years. I've the last time I saw her was on my sister's wedding, you know, in May. Um, her. I can't imagine what it must be like, like for her parents though. Like the thing is I love them with all my heart. They're genuinely real sweet and good people. And they have been fighting this thing. Like they, it has been a real serious, serious fucking struggle. I mean, just the, the, I mean, there are millions of dollars in debt. I mean, it's just, it's a fucking shit show, you know, and then to have, and then, and then, and then, and then to discover that like, like it's not, it's not for not, it wasn't for not. She kicked its ass. She was, she like, like, like they were, they're, I mean, they're a fucking inspiration. They're a fucking, they're an absolute inspiration. But, and, they, and in fact, they, that, that thing, their message was like, they're like, look, look guys, we don't want tears. We don't want, we don't want sorry. Like, like we're going to, there will be a time for that. That we're going to be, we're, there's going to, no, there, and there is, there is W. Scott. Uh, like they they do have, they do have a GoFundMe start. Like the thing is like, I was like, they've got, I mean, they, they're on top of it. Like they're, they're kicking ass. Um, it's, it's just a shitty, it's a, I mean, the thing is, is like, it's just a, such a shitty thing, you know, like the, um, I mean, yeah, man, I, I, I could, some of the shit that they've, like some of the, cause they, they documented this whole thing. Like people, th- this is just to give you a little, a little picture into their life. Cause it's been, they, um, they receive like these, these emails and they receive messages and sometimes texts cause people f- find their, like, and people will reach out and be like, Hey, have you tried this therapy? And, they, and they'll be like, yeah, we did. And it's not like, they've tried everything. Like literally anybody that said, suggested anything like, all right, we'll try it. Let's see. Like if it helps her, let's do it. She's our little girl. Um, and then, and then people will say, well, you know, like people will say like, you know, and they'll, they'll do something for two or three months and they won't see any effect. And, and, and then people will attack them and be like, you are shitty parents for no longer using that. If you just kept doing it, if you just kept, you know, if you continue to spending and then it's, it's like, so, so while they're dealing with their daughter, like, like it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just a yeah, complete yeah. and utter shit show, you know? And yeah. the thing is, is that like, I just. Yeah. Anyway, so so sorry to bring sorry to bring all this down. You bring you guys down, but like the thing is like so. But this this is news. This is news that we I got yesterday, and and so yeah. it has been, um. So it's it's been a foremost and forefront on my mind. The thing is, is like, and I don't and I don't and I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is like, I, I mean, certainly contributing money is going to help. But the thing is, is it like, but also just like just kind of like building awareness, just letting people know that like this shit is like this shit is, it's it's everywhere, and it, and it can affect any kid. And when it does, it is no joke, you know, yeah. it can fucking destroy, you know, and, and yeah, um, my, my daughter that just came in here, she just turned five, uh, last week or the week before. And I couldn't imagine yeah. going through that. You know, I, I had troubles with well, my first daughter when she was three months old going it, through some situations and I just, it sucks. In, in fact, in fact, her dad, that was, that was, that, that, this was the one, in fact, this is something I, I, I want to, I want to turn this into a song, but I, I, I like, I want to work with him and the family. Cause I'd like to, I'd like to write more songs about their experience because the thing is I, there's nothing that, that kind of sells, uh, uh, like that cre- puts people in the emotional headspace of someone going through something terrible, like a song, you know, like it allows you, like allows you to kind of empathize in a really intense way. But the thing is, so he was telling me the story where he was. This is before she was diagnosed, and she had a, she had a tumor on her spine, and it was and it was making it difficult for her to walk, and so and so she would was often going out and being like, "Daddy, can you carry me?" And and so he'd be like, "Yeah, sure, you know, of course I'll carry you," and 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 they were they were staying with some family members, and the family members were like, "Why are you why are you why are you just like why don't you just let her walk? Like you should have her out be out running running and playing, you know?" And he's like he's like, "Well." she keeps asking me to carry her. And like, the thing is like, she's my baby. Like, of course, like, and so he tells me, he's like, he's like, he's like, I can see that they were getting frustrated, but I'm like, she's my little girl. Like, of course I'm, she wants me to carry her. Of course I'm going to carry her, you know? And, um, and when he realized that something was wrong was they were, they were, they were all going to a candy store. And, 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 and you know what? And in fact, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I should be, t- I, I'm this, there's nothing bad in the story, but it's, it's personal stuff. But like, but this is, but this is like, this is how impact, like, this is how 
crazy this stuff is. So, so they're yeah. going to they're, they're going to a candy store, and all the kids are like, "Can we go?" And, and they're like, "Yeah, go ahead." And all the kids run in, and he's he goes to put her down. She's like, "No, no, 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 no! I want to stay with you." And he and he's like, and she and she loves candy, and he's like, "Oh shit! Something's like something's really wrong." If she's like if she's not like participating in this like thing that everybody's super excited about. And that was the moment yeah. they decided like we should go get her checked out. And it turns out, yeah, like you know. So the thing is, like, so it's just, it's just like, you know, like just fucking, just heartbreak after heartbreak, just these little, you know. So, yeah. so I, yeah, so, I think, I think all of us, at least the vast majority of us, know someone who's dealing with cancer, or know someone who has a family member that's dealing with cancer. And I think one of the, you know, aside from like, you know, donating to causes like for research and things like that, I think one of the one of the greatest things that we can do is just give understanding. Uh, you know, th they're going through things that we're not going through. Um, they're, you know, th they're facing things that we might not even be able to understand. And I think just us not having to understand, just, just offering that, you know what, I get it, do what you need to do. Like give them that space, give them that, you know what, give yeah, them that's... the ear, give them that ear if they want to use it, but don't force yes. it on them, you know, Yes. Just give them that support, I guess, is is Amen. one of the greatest things that that we can do. So, Amen. Yeah, and certainly not, certainly not try to like, certainly don't show, like that was the thing is like. So I I went to them early on and I was like, hey, so somebody told me about CBD oil or CDB oil, or whatever. It's like the opposite, the cannabis. Like, like it's like the the non THC. There's a cannabis oil thing that that yeah. that uh that apparently has done well for for other friends of mine, and so. One friend of mine, she had she had inoperable tumors in her kidneys. She was dying, and she started using this cannabis oil, and and it, and, it, and and she's alive now. And and they and they and her and her physicians attribute it to the this cannabis oil. So I brought it up to them, um, and this must have been I must have, it must have been three three months into into their treatment, you know. And I was like, hey, you know, I just heard about this, and and the look on on my cousin Kristen's face, she's like, Mike, she's like, we know about it. And and we're using it. But the thing is, is, we like every literally every single person we talk to has some remedy, has some person we need to talk to, has some yeah. something. So the thing is, like, so so yeah. So the thing is, like, so that was that was a big takeaway for me. Was I was like, you know what? They're very smart. They love their daughter. I swear to God, they're doing all the homework they possibly could. It's not my mm -hmm. job to try to like to try to go figure out a solution for them. I just, right. I just be like, what can, yeah. what can I do for you? What do you need from me? Do you want me to watch? Do you want me to babysit? You know the kid. Yeah, you know? Can I, like, can that, I, can that I take I can your do. dogs for a day? Can I? Yeah, can I yeah, check your yeah, mail? Yeah, yeah. Can I? You know? Yeah. Can I mow the that's grass? Exactly right. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly I, it. You know? I, I found that uh, the medical advice and marriage advice are right along the same the same trail. Everybody has <laughs> a new idea for you to try, and you can't try them all at the same time. But as soon as you give up on one of them, that's the reason why things are going yep. bad. Yep. yep. That's why um, you're an asshole. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, that 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 really sucks. And uh, I I got no other words. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and 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 again, and, and there's and there really is, you know, it's it's one of those things that yeah, it's not. There's nothing you can be said. You know, it's I mean, it's crazy. We all, it's it's gonna happen to all of us. It's just it's just very sad that it's that it's that it's a little girl and it's just there and they're just sweetheart people. They're just like I I would I would I would I mean I wouldn't wish this on Hitler, but but yeah. you know, but even so, you know, just well maybe so. Hitler, but uh, yeah. <laughs> how many? <laughs> um, and, and and Mike, don't forget to. Uh, remember the possibility of writing the song from your point of view. Oh yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. The thing is, it's like, it's like, that's that, that, that will come. I mean, the thing is, it's like, that's, that is certainly going to come when, I mean, um, I, I, I need, I need emotional distance. I need to be emotionally neutral about something for me to write about it from my perspective. And so the thing is like, so I need to get away from, I need to get a little bit more distance from it. So, so that will probably be in, Three or four or five years yeah. that, I'll, that I'll tackle my perspective on on it all because because otherwise the thing is is that when I'm if I'm writing while I'm while I've got emotion kind of rolling around inside me it usually becomes a tilted so like it's usually over the top and and in order right. for me to capture the the like the the real like the 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 genuine emotion I start from an emotionally neutral place and I write until the song is evoking the emotion that I want and yeah. that's when I know that I'm I'm capturing that I've got I've got the right so I, I know other people. I know other people work the work the uh, yeah. uh, the other way where they they can only do it when they're when they're experiencing intense emotion. But I'm like I'm like that's 
Oh, yeah, really. Yeah. So that's yeah, like, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to write the note on the, the, on the paper if you can't see through your tears, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah well, and just, it, it just helps when you like, don't write music. You just write words. <laughs> that's my dig. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. And that's, and, and that's, you know, and, and, and that's, that's that. And the, the thing is, and that's, that's definitely a, bit, a huge distinction because, you know, just, just, you know, doing this versus, you know, like, like things is like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like once this is a major, this is a minor, you know? And, and so, and so like, like each, each, like you can say the same thing over a different chord progression and it will have a different meaning just because of the sounds underneath it, you know? And, yeah. and so, you know, and that's, and that's the, you know, and that, and so the thing is, so it really is like, like it, it can, it can, it can, you know, it can completely radically change the message of the words just by the chords of the melody you're putting under it, you know? So. And uh, yeah. when, when all that comes around, people can find it at twitch.tv slash Mike TV live. Yes. Yes. To bring things full circle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And scene. <laughs> uh, Kent, where can people find you, man? Yeah. If anybody's interested in, in my they're, random they're not, ramblings, they're they not. can head over to, they're not, they don't care. They can have head over to Twitch and find me at RM underscore Del Noche. But more likely you're, you're a beer person like me and you want to know what I'm up to in the beer world. You can head over to untapped and find me at Del Noche on there. And uh, I'm Del Noche or Del Noche 77, just about anywhere else. Amos, what about you, man? At Ethan Kane, because that's that's how I roll. I have so many. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, at Ethan Kane on Twitter, that's pretty much where I can be found. If you find me on Facebook, good luck to you, because it's basically just a bunch of reposts of Twitter shit. Um, but uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. And uh, oh man, I can't I can't see the uh, it, uh, what happened right there. Oh my god, <laughs> something happened and I don't know what it was, but it's whatever it was. It was awesome because only awesome shit happens right there. Uh, man, I re I I, I yeah. Really this is the part where you where you push that button where the music starts playing. Oh oh that so that's what's supposed to happen. Okay, uh, that that goes right <laughs> here. Uh, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. You can find all the things we talk about at richwizardry dot com and. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for listening for Kent, for Mike, and for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Have the answer. Wow, that's. Uh, and then we go and then we hit this diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this bro <laughs> yeah we still can't hear the audio of that stop fucking with me right now man <laughs>